Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson and welcome to the screencast. In this screencast, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Quick Start VM and Eclipse to run MapReduce code. I should point out that if you're going to be doing this in a best practice, you should be using Maven, but I'm going to be showing you some ways to get around that, maybe for proof of concept or if you just want to use the IDE directly. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to check out a project from Git and how to import that into Eclipse. So here, I'm going to be checking out one of my Git uh, examples. In this case, it's using playing cards to show how MapReduce works. So I'm going to copy this URL, the Git URL. I'm going to start up a terminal. I'm going to Git clone and paste in that URL. We're going to be receiving all the data and cloning that, that Git repository. And the clone is done. Let's go back into Eclipse and import that. So we go to File, Import, Existing Projects into Workspace. And we select the root directory. We browse and we find that directory, in this case, Uno example. We click on OK and make sure that if there's other projects within that root directory that all of them are checked. In this case, card is checked and we hit finish. Now that's going to import in this, this project. This project will we'll come back to this project in a little bit, but this one allows us to visualize and see how MapReduce works with playing cards. Another thing I should point out as we're looking at these projects, I'm going to go to the properties and to the build path. As we look at these libraries, these libraries are uh, specific to the version of CDH that you're using. So here's a good example. Here, CDH 4.2. So as of right now, and this is of course subject to change, the version on the Quick Start VM is CDH 4.2. Once it goes to CDH 4.3, for example, then we'd have to change the libraries that are coming in here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I want to show you how to take a project from another one. Um, if you noticed, if you were sharp-eyed before, you saw that the quick, the quick Start VM comes with this training project just from the beginning. And in that training project, there's just a bunch of stubs. What you can do to create your own project, you can actually copy that. So what you do is you right click on training, click on copy, then click on paste. From there you can give it a new name. Uh, so I'm going to call this my project. If you want to put it in a different location, you can do that right here by unchecking default. Otherwise, this new project is going to go in home, Cloudera, Workspace, My Project. We click OK. What this, what Eclipse has done is it's taken all of the build properties, or excuse me, all the libraries, and copied them into another one. So in a completely separate project, we can start working with it and have something completely different and new. What we'd have to do is, since we copied all that code over, we could then start um, changing the file names. So if we wanted to change those file names, we can right click, refactor, rename, and this will allow us to give us give a new name. So instead of stub driver, we'd call it whatever, let's say project driver. And we can, uh, this is something that's built into Eclipse here. So we hit next, and hit finish. And now project driver is the new name for that file. So we could just go through and start changing the names of our mappers and reducers and our test if we if that's what we wanted to do. We could also start deleting those files if we needed to. There's a lot of different things that we can do to start using that project. And that's how we can take and create a new MapReduce project from an existing one, that existing training one. Now I want to show you how to create a project from scratch 
you might need this if you're not using the quick start VM for example or maybe there's a new version of CDH and you need to do that so what we can do we do file new project new Java project I'm going to give it the name from scratch use the default location and hit finish but let's go into the build path all my libraries aren't there so if I were to start trying to use any of the Hadoop or MapReduce or HBase for example none of those would work because none of those libraries are there so what we do is we click on add external jars and we need to go back so we click on file system that brings us to the root of the file system we go to user lib and we see a few Hadoop um, directories in here so in lib we double click on Hadoop within Hadoop we have a client directory called client dash o2o we double click in there here there's a, a big list of, of jars that we can take from so in order to select a bunch what we do I generally just take all of them and holding down the shift key and clicking once we can select all of those we click on OK that brings us back we've only selected a few of the jars we need so we need to click back into add external jars and click back on Hadoop and there's a few jars that we need to pick up right here so Hadoop annotations and using the control key we can select more excuse me control shift so we need to select those three that's Hadoop annotations Hadoop auth and Hadoop dash common hit OK and there's one more that we need and that's kind of due to a bug uh, a bit of weirdness so client O2O doesn't have one of the jars that we need and that jar that we need is this one we can find that in user lib Hadoop lib and it's called commons HTTP client 31.jar this is a runtime dependency so you won't if you don't have this you won't get an actual compile problem but when you go to run things it won't run so we click on OK and we have a fully configured library we have all the things on our class path and we could start working with MapReduce at this point from here we just create new class and we call it from scratch driver and we would start working with that and start putting in all of our map reduce that we need now I want to cover another one that I find is a very common qu question this is how do you put breakpoints and th that, those sorts of things in map reduce so let me show you that I'm going to go back to the card project and I'm going to open up I'm going to put in a, a few different breakpoints so to put in breakpoints in in uh, MapReduce or excuse me in Eclipse there's kind of a gutter right there if you double click right there you can add breakpoints you can see that a new little ball showed up there I'm going to add one into the mapper and I'm going to add another one into the reducer so we have three different breakpoints what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit run and this is going to error out and that's to be expected the reason I do this is it's one of the failings in my opinion of Eclipse where it's really difficult to create a run configuration so by hitting run with the class with the main in it it will create a run configuration for you which is otherwise more difficult to do what we can do now is we can start editing our run configurations so we click on the drop box that's right next to run click on run configurations and then we click on the arguments tab so we're expecting two different arguments as we see down here in the output so we said incorrect number of arguments expected the input and expected the output so what we can do we can put in the input card input dot text and output what this is going to do 
and this is going to run Hadoop in a little bit different way. This is going to be run in what's called local job runner mode. Local job runner mode runs all of the daemons for Hadoop within the single G JVM. And it does a few other things different. For example, if you look here, this card input dot text actually exists on my local file system right there within the workspace. It doesn't exist in HDFS. And this output directory, this output directory once we create it, is going to end up right there in my workspace as well. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to hit apply. And since we wanted to debug things, I'm going to hit debug. Okay. And this is a usual prompt by Eclipse. It says, do you want to um, change your perspective? Yes. Okay, so we're at the breakpoint for the driver. This is pretty easy to get to. Uh, you can start stepping through your code and start seeing what's happening. But what's more interesting is once we start getting into the mapper code. So let's hit resume, and I just removed the breakpoint by double clicking on it. Okay. What we've done is we've went in and we've allowed MapReduce, we've put that breakpoint in, and we're seeing what one of the context or one iteration of MapReduce on the map side. So we can actually start looking at, at uh, keys and values just as we would if we were to be debugging any other program. So in this case, our key is zero, and the first line of our input file is diamonds three. We can start looking at things. We can see, okay, what's our matcher, matcher object for our regular expression? Up here, we have our, all of our variables. We can start inspecting them. We can step through our code. And as you can see, step, step over and see what's happening. And if we want to go on to the next one, what we do, or the next call of the map function, we just hit resume and that will do the next call. So we can look at our key. The key is now 23. Our value is now hearts three. And we can start going through that. So I double click there to remove the breakpoint. Otherwise, it's going to get continually called. And now we're in our reducer. Here, we're being called by the reduce function. We can look at our key. Our key is clubs and our values. That's an iterable, and we can't actually look and see what's inside there because MapReduce uh, uses that in a memory efficient fashion. But we can start going through this for loop. If we wanted to see what the values that were part of that values iterable, right here we have our for loop that we can start working with. So in this case, that first value is four, and we can keep on going through that that for loop. So here we have written out the the sum of 19 key of clubs. If we want to go on to the next call of the reducer, we just hit once again resume. Here sum, we can start going through our for loop, start going through that. We could also put another breakpoint in where we just skip over the for loop and see what our sum is. Let's remove our breakpoints so that we can finish up our program. As you can see here on the bottom, all of the output that you'd normally see and that you've always seen before, it's coming out there in the console. Let's take a look at one more thing, and that, and that was that output file. So we don't see that immediately here in Eclipse. What we actually have to do is right click on card and click on refresh. Eclipse doesn't refresh your file system, your file system output by default or um, all the time automatically. You have to do that yourself. It's kind of a pain, but it's one of those things with Eclipse. So now we see that there is an output directory. If you remember when we were configuring our, our program, we said, I want the output to go into a directory called output. Well, we have it right there. Let's take a look at the contents. So if you've run MapReduce jobs on a regular cluster, 
this is all familiar to you. You've got the success file and you've got your part file. One of the nice things about running this right there in Eclipse is that you can see the output file right there in your workspace. Double click on that, here's the output and you can start looking at things. So if you wanted to start changing things or you found a bug, you'd have to delete that directory and run it once more. So I hope this was informative. I hope this helped you out with setting up your IDE, in this case Eclipse, with running MapReduce jobs. Once again, the things that you're doing here will be slightly different for other IDEs, but the same thing should apply. And if you have any questions, please post them as comments. Thanks.